Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Primetime Newscast, the English language on Canal to International. I'm called Maureen Z. We begin with our top stories. Strong indications that Nigeria and Cameroonian forces yesterday warded off a gang of armed boys said to be a militant a wing of the Bafia Biafra Nation League when they attempted to drop explosives into warships near Ikang Abana in the Bakasi Peninsula. We equally tell you how Cameroonians and Nigerians are cohabiting in that part of the country. And we equally talk on a back to school which is two weeks uh, to another school year and like every year comes complaints over expensive school accessories to this effect promo promotional back to school sales have been organized at the Department of Commerce in Yaoundé and other parts of the country equally talk to some parents on how they're preparing for back to school those are major stories details right Good evening once more. There are strong indications of that uh, Nigerian and Cameroonian forces yesterday warded off a gang of armed boys said to be militant wing of the Biafra Nation uh, League when they attempted to drop explosives into a war ships uh, near Ikang Abana in the Bakasi Peninsula. A reporter, Kajan Henry Atembe, completes that story. Reports from Nigeria news outlets indicate that disaster was narrowly averted at the weekend when Nigerian and Cameroonian forces frustrated an attempt by terrorists to attack warships anchored in the Bakasi Peninsula. According to various sources, the attack was planned and initiated on Saturday, 19th August by members of the militant wing of the Biafra National League fighting for the secession of Biafra from the rest of Nigeria. Security sources say the pro-Biafran militants attempted to drop explosives into the warships near Ikang Abana in the Bakasi Peninsula but were repelled by superior firepower from Nigeria and Cameroonian troops. Sources in the locality say the Nigerian Navy is apparently conducting training exercises there involving the testing of heavy artillery. Separate sources add that Cameroon has redeployed their forces to beef up the joint border security installment in the area, with troops reinforcements coming from the Isangale, Idabato subdivisions in the peninsula. The Biafra Nation League has been agitating for the sovereign state of Biafra, warning the federal government to release Namdi Kanu and asking Cameroonian authorities to withdraw its men from the Bakasi Peninsula. It was the head and we stay in the Bakasi uh, Peninsula maritime area of Cameroon 15 uh, years after it was finally handed over uh, to uh, Cameroon, Bakasi harbors, Cameroonians and Nigerians are living in peace and uh, harmony. Both uh, communities have resolved to strengthen their cooperation and uh, friendship uh, ties. In a fuller report, Inez Ondua Ambala paints a picture of the cohabitation between Nigerians and Cameroonians. Her story. This is the Bakasi Peninsula, found in the Andean division of the southwest region. This part of Cameroon shares boundary with Nigeria. Defense forces sacrificed their life during the Bakasi conflict to make the area an El Dorado. With its rich natural potentials, Bakasi has always been subjected to piracy attack. But the Rapid Intervention Battalion is not relenting efforts in tracking down pirates. With an estimated population of 300,000 inhabitants, the Bakasi Peninsula is populated by both Cameroonians and Nigerians living in harmony with fishing being their mainstay. 
at Diabato, Isangele, which are the most populated areas to Kombo Abedimo, Kombo Itindi, and Bamuso, Cameroonians and Nigerians have been playing their part in fostering peace and unity in Bakasi, which stands as a peace reference in the troubled southwest region. In Bakasi, Cameroonians and Nigerians are living as brothers as both countries are united through history and geography. During public manifestations, the cultural identity of Cameroon and Nigeria is exhibited. Through their daily activities, they portrayed their commitment to continue living together, reinforcing ties for more solidarities. And under the context of reinforcing our capacity to deal with rising insecurity in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé officers of the Special Operations Regiment, GSO, this weekend embarked on a military walk on a distance of over 25 uh, kilometers. The exercise led by Yaoundé. GSO commander aims at boosting the energy and morale of the forces of law and order and to more than produce expected results. More in the following story. After firm instructions, the 25 kilometers military walk by police officers of the Special Operation Regiment kick started here at Bingela, Bankomo subdivision, Mefuan Okono division of the central region, through Nomayos, Barie, Ahala, Tropicana, to their base here at Nvan in Yaoundé. The exercise led by the GSO commander falls under the framework of improving the physical capabilities and operational skills of the special unit and strengthening the spirit of cohesion combativeness and endurance of staff against the rising security challenges. The objective is to reinforce our uh, physical performance. Aside the long walk on Saturday, August 19, the men and women in black sneakers also carried out stretching activities portraying physical readiness. And parents as well as dealers or vendors in school or stationaries are going through a tense period. It happens each year, both of the two. None of the two parties get used to the tense situation at this point in, in time as vendors as themselves school gadgets like bags, a water bottle just to list a few abundance of the sales are stagnant or very slow or famous at this point in time. A reporter Sarah Sheriff has been talking with some parents as well as traders. The 2023-2024 back to school in the city of Douala preparation seems slow. Parents are reluctant at the buying process. Meanwhile, school resumes in a week to come and those sellers try to reduce the prices as they can, but the sales still don't flow. Hoping that by next week there will be more affluence and their sales, they continue exposing the school gadgets of all colors and styles. For some parents, they prefer to start early enough in order not to buy them at higher prices in the weeks ahead. <laughs> She adds that compared to last year, goods are of good quality, though the prices will not fit in her budget. What is sure is no parent will leave his or her child, thus a means will be found to satisfy them as this makes the priority for most parents at this time. That we are barely at two weeks to another school year or academic year 2023-2024 and like every year comes complaints over expensive school accessory to these effects promotional back to school 
struggles have been organized by the Ministry of Commerce in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, to lighten the burden of uh, parents, the forum which open today is yet to be discovered by many. More with our reporter, High Center and student journalist, Chelsea Kuon. Their story. The stands are many occupied by school accessories of all types. We are at the explanade of the 20th May Boulevard in Yaoundé, where parents bash in to get school items for their children at prices they say are affordable. From exercise books, writing materials and drawing boards, the parents satisfy their needs. I bought all the books for my grandchild. The prices are quite different from those in the market and they are also available at one place. In a bid to accompany the government and parents for a less costly back to school preparations, the vendors in the stands sell at lower prices as compared to those in the market. An example is the price of a pen. Currently, the price of a big pen is at 150 francs, but here we sell it at 125 francs and a packet at 5,000 francs. And with just a stone throw from the site is a row of bookshops and libraries. With book lists at hand, the managers are busy making available to parents books on the syllabuses and other materials for their children. The price, it depends here, we sell in packets. So the packet starts from, we can have from 1.5 up to 5,000. The price never changes. Last year, uh, like the, for the book for 200 pages, we are selling last year for 28,000, 29,000. This year is the same. And with barely two weeks left, to kickstart the 2023-2024 academic year, the mad rush for school kids is expected to rise. But most salary earners are still anxiously waiting for salaries to enter the race. And civil society organizations have urged the government of Cameroon to fast track the implementation of laws on the bad practices against our widows and our girls. They made a call this weekend in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, through a sports work to sensitize the different stakeholders. More with our reporter, Hyson Chair. From Simbok to the Akasia neighborhood in Yaoundé, the youths in their numbers, sport work, debunking, harmful cultural practices against widows and women, and advocating for measures to stop the rapid spread of HIV and AIDS in young girls. We have certain factors that are influencing the spread of this disease. What are those factors? We have female genital mutilation, we have early child marriage, we have widow inheritance. The rate of HIV for adolescent girls and young women, especially in Cameroon, is very high. And what is the rate? We have 24 girls being infected every day as against nine boys. And that is why you see this advocacy is focused on protecting women, on preventing women from being infected with this disease. The outing on Saturday, August 19, under the banner of hope for Vulnerable Children Association, was an occasion to call on the powers that be for immediate action. I hope that uh, through this uh, work, the community will see, the government will see, and they're going to take action. There are some laws that have been uh, put in place by the Cameroon government, but those laws are not being implemented. So we are asking the government to reinforce those laws and apply them and even punish corporates so that others will learn, and then gradually we are going to reduce these uh, practices. The exercise was punctuated by stops at major road junctions with the sensitization messages sounded loud and clear. And Cameroon's and national men's basketball selected are winners of the 2024 Paris uh, Pre-Olympic uh, qualifiers, they uh, claim to the only tickets on offer for the African uh, continent. After beating Senegal, we take you to South Africa where the Prime Minister Joseph Diangute represents Cameroon at the 15th uh, summit of the five countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, of the BRICS on behalf of the head of state in South Africa. This goes on in Johannesburg and is scheduled for August 22 to 24, uh, 2023. This is honored the team BRICS Collaboration for Sustainable Future. The summit is held every year for the leaders of the five countries discuss economic, 
political and strategic issues of mutual issues. And we equally thank you to Niger, where soldiers promise a transition of the three years uh, maximum. This was announced by uh, General uh, Tiani after, on, after an ECOWAS delegation went to Niamey on August uh, 19. He equally warned against possible military intervention, a decision which the ECOWAS considers in unacceptable and reiterates its requests and demands for the constitutional to be restored as soon as possible. And that package from our international briefs was put together by our reporter intern Aisha Tau. And that brings us to the end of this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Canal the International in the English language. Thanks so much for watching. But coming up next is the brief with Lil Piju. And so we'll be back same time tomorrow. Good night.